It is one o'clock on the West Coast. It is Hug Nation time all over the world. Before we get started, or as we get started, let's take a moment to say grace, to sit in gratitude, to surrender to this moment. In this now, be aware of all the sounds available to you to experience. Is there traffic? Is there birds? Is there animals? Is there wind? Is there creaking boards? Is there computer hums? Is there computer fans? Maybe another fan, an air conditioner. Screams from down the hall. Be aware of all the sensations in your body, your feet on the floor, your clothes resting against your skin. Be aware of the thoughts flying in, in and out of your head. <gasps> Do I have time for this? Oh, is that going? What's that? Oh. Just be present here. Be empty. Leave all your to-do lists at the door. Life is a nearly infinite collection of now moments. So let's just for practice fully submit, fully surrender to one of those now moments right now. And in that now moment, this constantly evolving, always unfolding now moment, be aware of all the blessings. If you have sensations, those blessings. If your feet are on the floor, those blessings. If your belly is full, those blessings. If there's love in your life, those blessings. Mm. If there's a roof over your head, a clean bed, a hot shower, a shoulder to cry on, a smile to share, a food to eat, a gift to give. Just keep a loose running list in your head of all these blessings that exist for us to enjoy in this now moment. Even if you're not physically experiencing them now, they are a part of this now moment. They flood your now moment. Your riches You're submerged in riches and blessings in the ones we experience in this now moment and the ones we experience merely through our awareness of them. That's why it's so critical to be disciplined in our awareness and where we put our focus because whether or not my loved ones are physically in this room, by thinking of them, by thinking of my nephew's smile, by thinking of my brother's eyes, by thinking of my mom's hugs, I can enjoy, I can feel those blessings, I can feel that love and warmth and feel so rich in this now moment. Thank you universe for all of our blessings. Help us to focus on all these gifts. Amen. Welcome to Hug Nation. Oh, there's a little bit of a change today. And it's not just because it's sunny in San Diego for the first time this summer. And to be honest, I've actually enjoyed the overcast weather. I, I'm a big fan of non-sweat. I've always said that I think life should be separated into sweating and non-sweating activities. Sweating activities are jogging, mm, running, mm, tennis, making love maybe. On the other side is non-sweating activities, such as reading, such as sleeping, such as typing on my computer. So when those become sweating activities, I get a little irritable, sticky. Mm. That being said, welcome, son. If there's one thing that is a surefire way to waste your energy, it is complaining about the weather. 
Um, I, I speak a lot about Jacob Glass, jacobglass.com, and he speaks locally, and he also speaks in Santa Barbara, and he has a weblog, and he's a really impactful teacher to me. And in the last year or so, he's really kind of taken a shift where he's even said, you know, like, I, I'm really, here's a reading list. Don't come to my lectures until you've read those books. I'm really not interested in restating these, you know, the obvious new thought stuff. I'm an advanced graduate level course. And one of the big focuses that he's been talking about is about action. Not just talking about things, not just, you know, listening, not just understanding them, but doing them, acting, living according to principles. You know, he talks about having, you know, a bookcase full of ideas, or he, he made a great, so you know what, I've got a, a closet full of yoga DVDs, and they do me no good unless I do them. Not even if I watch them. I actually have to do them for it to be beneficial to me. And I had an experience uh, last week. I went to go see, I won't be able to pronounce his name, uh, it's on my blog and stuff, but a, a, a guru who is part of, if you go SOS.org is the website, it's the uh, Science of Spirituality is his organization. And he gave a talk about stress and what it was really about was about how the you know, that at any moment we can access our inner divine seed and about how, you know, as we learn more, his, he comes from a science background, so as we break down matter into its tiny bits and we recognize that it's not just matter, but these, that matter, these things, these pieces, these particles are actually vibrating. And it's only recently that we've been able to really see that, that we have the measurements and the devices that we can actually measure, see this vibration. And his teachings is that these subatomic vibrations is the God, divine, universal vibration. And through meditation, we can get in touch with the feeling, sight, and sound, lights, colored, and things that are the, the divine, that is cosmic consciousness, that is God. And so he teaches people how to access that. But as he gave his talk, which was great, I really enjoyed what he had to say, but I also recognized as he was talking about these ideas, that these are ideas that are not new to me. In fact, they're ideas that I've heard expressed by many people in many beautiful ways. In fact, they're ideas that I've expressed or tried to express here many times. And I became aware that, wait a minute, I understand these ideas. I understand intellectually, theoretically, knowledge, head knowledge, I get this. This is, I'm nodding along, I get it. Like, I get it. But what separates me from the guy on the stage at this time was that, was not the words, was not the explanations. We, all of the words and explanations is the equivalent of, say, the Bible. It's, it's not the Bible that, it, that defines the teachings of, of Jesus. The Bible is just the words. And anybody can say the words. I love the Buddha saying, do not mistake the finger for the moon. Uh, you know, if faith, religion is a finger pointed at the moon, but do not mistake the finger for the moon. All these words is all fingers. And so as, we're talk as, as I'm listening to this and kind of looking at my life and looking at things recently in my life and, and, and kind of areas where I find myself hitting ceilings in my growth or um, not ceilings, but you know, plateaus or, or obstacles, or awarenesses of like, oh my gosh, there's a whole chapter here that I have yet to even crack open. It's, much of it is about experiential body, soul knowledge. And in some areas, I have made huge strides in the last year of that, that, that soul knowledge, where it's not an idea that I can defend or explain or argue. It's just like, I just know. And I, I've shared at times here uh, certain lessons throughout, like, like I shared uh, the Turkish mountaintop story, where when it was all over, I just knew. Not, not head knowledge, but soul knowledge. I knew that the purpose of life was to experience this gift. Or I had a recent uh, ceremonial shamanic experience where when it was all finished, I just knew what death, what was waiting in death. and had no fear. Not from an intellectual, like, you know, I could debate you on what, you know, anything. No, it was just like, I just knew. And it wasn't something, it just, 
soul knowledge. So as he was talking and and really just basically giving strong arguments for meditation, I became keenly aware that you know it's kind of like that that the, the, this next rung of the ladder for me is about doing, is about experiencing, is about meditating, is about being in that state of present awareness, in that state of meditative um, surrendering to God consciousness in, in the present. And so that's a huge thing for me because I lack, I struggle with, up till now, I have struggled with, see I'm trying to work my wording, discipline as well as patience as well as many, I've got all sorts of, you know, these obstacles that I've been trying to, to work with. But this week I have been really trying to remind myself and trying to practice of just coming to present moment. Coming to present moment. Focus on my breath. Even if it's just for 10 seconds coming to that place or when I'm doing something instead of thinking about what I'm, I'm going to do next like I've been I've been having struggle with my ears have been uh, uh, I need they're, they're healing from a botched stretching um, so as I've been soaking them in sea salt I've been taking that as a opportunity to just sit and even though I'm supposed to soak for five minutes it's still a struggle for me to just like focus on my breath you know a minute of focus on my breath is is pretty good for me. Now, <clears throat> this is a, uh, on one hand, this is, this was frustrating to feel like there is this whole, I'm an infinite, infant, infant in the infinite. Ooh. On the other hand, it was very encouraging because it was like, what is required to, to explore this new area? nothing. The absence of everything. Simply quieting, simply being present, simply practicing that and allowing these head knowledge things to surrender to them and allow, have faith that soul knowledge will fill the emptiness. And I do have that faith. It's just baby steps in my, in my patterns. So I, wherever you are, um, you may see a change or trend in Hugnation where I'm going to be trying to be integrating a little bit more visceral body knowledge into, into what we do, like the opening blessing and, and the hug itself. Those two moments are, I think, the deepest I get in, in that experiential body knowledge surrender in my entire week, which is why I commit to doing this for myself, even if no one's here. And potentially, whatever I'm not, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I would like. I am open. I'm surrendering. I am manifesting or hoping that more and more of my life is in that space of of present surrender, open to the flow. I know it intellectually. I just need to do. Um, little thing about meditation. Now, one thing about meditation, I, I actually don't believe that meditation can be doing. Um, again, not as a meditation expert, but as a, I think that, I, I read something recently that really changed my thoughts about meditation. It, I, actually, it wasn't, I, wasn't, I think I was listening to one, but the way it talked about it was that we meditate to practice being present. So if you're doing other things and you're present when you're doing it, it can be a meditative dishwashing, for example, where you are so present that it is a meditative practice of dishwashing. I guess in that sense it could be. But the reason why meditation is important is that it's, it's building, like, I have a massively atrophied uh, silent muscle. So when I try to just be present in the moment, it's just, I just, I, I need to build up my, my fibers, my muscle fibers of awareness so that I can just sit in that place and not 
not just feel so overwhelmed by nothingness or by, by lack of activity. And so with, as meditation, as a practice, and that's why the breathe and everything, it's not, it's not a, it's, it's not a, a, it's like, I used to stress about trying to empty my brain or be silent or, you know, all these, these objectives of meditating. But when I started thinking about it in terms of, oh, it's just practicing being present. And so whenever you wander, you pull back into the present. And that's not, that is not a failure of meditating. That is actually successful meditating. It's kind of like, you know, taking swings in the batting cages. You know, you can miss them all and hit one or two, and that's still batting practice. You can have your mind wander like crazy and then remember occasionally to come back and be in your breathing and be in the present moment, and that's still a successful meditation practice. <laughs> Coming from somebody who doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. So this is just my ramblings, not any sort of guidance. That's good advice for me no matter what. Whatever I say, consider it ramblings, not guidance. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Um, all right, uh, it is 125. I think we should do a hug. What do you guys think about that? You only live once. Enjoy the color.